More than 40 years have elapsed since the Boeing 757 first flew. As the replacement to the Boeing 727, it was not Boeing's best-selling narrow-body type, but it continues to be used for commercial and freight flights today. Except for the recent dramatic events surrounding the MAX series, the Boeing 737 family has grown significantly in popularity and financial success. However, many pilots say they would prefer to continue flying the 757. In terms of economic efficiency, older generation aircraft cannot compete with newer models. However, despite its age, the Boeing 757 still allows pilots to genuinely fly the plane. There are numerous reported incidents of pilots switching from newer and larger airliners, such as the Boeing 777, back to the 757 because they simply missed flying. Many people still like the control and pleasure that comes with driving a manual car, just as an automatic transmission is easier and more convenient to use. The plane has remarkable flight qualities, allowing it to fly from practically every airport in the world, even those with noise limitations, short runways, and hot and high altitude locations. It is quiet, fuel efficient, eco-friendly, and fulfills global engine emissions regulations. The 757 was introduced in 1978 and the production was formally discontinued in 2004. Between 1981 and 2004, 1,150 units were manufactured, including 757 200s and 62 extended 757 300s, even though the last Boeing 757 went off the production line 25 years ago, more than 500 are still in service with 47 different airlines across the world. What is the key to this aircraft's success and appeal among professionals and passengers? The first factor is the unmatched power for its size. Pilots often compare the Boeing 757 to a sports car, and with good reason. First, consider the big engines. The 757 offered two engine options, the Rolls-Royce rb 2 m 535 c and the Pratt & Whitney PW37. Moreover, the Boeing 757 is 20% more fuel efficient than the Boeing 727. Both engine types allow the 757 to take off from runways as short as 1,660 meters at speeds less than 260 km per hour, making it ideal for usage in smaller and more rural airports. Interestingly, this was Boeing's first contract with a foreign engine manufacturer. Previously, the RB211 from Rolls-Royce was only available for the B747SP and B747-200 aircraft. The Boeing 757's handling is regarded as completely neutral, which is typical of a commercial airplane. It can manage crosswinds swiftly and effectively thanks to its huge rudder. The second factor is the ergonomic cockpit, which is ahead of its time. The Boeing 757's cockpit design was another feature that distinguished it from other aircraft of the era. In the 1970s, Boeing dominated the civil aircraft industry with models such as the 707 and 727, while Airbus was still in its early stages. The 757 featured a fully new, high-tech glass cockpit that was not found in its predecessors. This enabled flights to be operated by two crew members. A flight engineer was no longer required. However, there is still a third seat reserved for an observer. The cockpit is outfitted with the Honeywell Pegasus Flight Management System. Both 757 versions came standard with the Pegasus system, as well as the upgraded Engine Indication and Crew Alerting System, EICAS. The glass cockpit EFIS, Electronic Flight Instrument System, displays all data on screens, providing pilots with far greater operational information. This was another step forward for aircraft safety. The buttons and controls are simple to operate, and the systems are clearly organized. It's worth mentioning that the Boeing 757 was designed in parallel with the wide-body Boeing 767. Thus, both planes had nearly identical cockpits, making it easier for flight crews to move between the two. The 757-300 has a similar cockpit architecture and operational systems, albeit some features have been modernized. In addition to its longer fuselage, the 757-300 received a redesigned interior with vacuum toilets, new tires, wheels, brakes, tail fin, stronger wings, and landing gear. The third factor is the new wing profile. The wings of the 757-300 and 757-200 feature a lower sweep and a narrower center section than previous Boeing aircraft. The lower surface of the wing is flatter, while the leading edge is slightly sharper. 
This boosts lift, decreases drag, improves aerodynamic efficiency, and enables for up to 35% fuel savings. The sole difference between the wings of the 757-300 and the 757-200 is that the former's construction had to be reinforced to sustain higher loads. A similar wing design was used for the Boeing 767, Boeing 777, and the C-17 military transport aircraft. The fourth factor is the comfortable passenger cabins. Many passengers prefer the Boeing 757 to the popular Boeing 737 and Airbus A320 for flight comfort. This is questionable, of course, because the 757's cabin width is the same as the older and rather cramped Boeing 737. Even the Airbus A318, like all 320 series planes, has a bigger interior than the 77, measuring 370 centimeters versus 350 centimeters. The Boeing 757 can seat 195 to 290 passengers, depending on the interior arrangement. The 757-200 has 195 to 231 seats, whereas the 757-300 can transport 243 passengers in two classes and up to 289 in a charter arrangement similar to the 767-300. American Delta Airlines is one of the few remaining 757 operators with 111 Boeing 757-200s and 16 stretched 757-300s in its fleet. Delta's 757-200 holds 199 passengers in a normal three-class layout. In comparison, the Boeing 737-900 can accommodate 180 passengers in a two-class layout. The fifth factor is that it is one of the first short and medium range airliners. The Boeing 77 was among the first aircraft designed exclusively for the short and medium range markets. According to its technical specifications, the 757-200 version can travel 7,220 kilometers, while the larger 757-300 has a maximum range of 6,287 kilometers. For comparison, the short-range Boeing 727-100 could only travel 4,300 kilometers nonstop. The Boeing 757 was also one of the first twin-engine aircraft to be granted an ETOP certificate for extended missions over water. Thus, it is not only ideal for domestic flights, but it can also fly nonstop on famous transatlantic routes. So is there a successor in the making? It appears that there is still no adequate alternative for the Boeing 757 which is why airlines continue to fly it. Though it is known that in 2015, around 11 years after the Boeing 757 was retired, a project was initiated to develop the mid-size Boeing 797, and different airlines have expressed interest in the new aircraft. United Continental, a prominent operator, has hinted at the introduction of a new Boeing product, citing both the Airbus A321LR and Boeing's future mid-size jet to replace its 757 fleet. The Airbus A321LR is a modified version of the A321neo that includes extra fuel tanks and can carry an additional four tons of passengers and cargo. Boeing has been speaking with airlines in recent years about the need for a new airliner that fits between the narrow-body 737 and the long-range 787 Dreamliner. Most prospective purchasers choose a larger jet than the Boeing 757, which has a range of up to 7,700 kilometers. Demand for the two-engine Boeing 797 is expected to range between 2,000 and 4,000 units. Both airlines and pilots believe the new Boeing 797 will fill the void left by the aging Boeing 757 fleet. Now, do you think Boeing should modernize and reintroduce the 757? Let us know in the comments. Please like, share, and subscribe for more such awesome content. Also, please take our memberships to support us.